Welcome to Whiskey is a Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano, and in today's journey, we are going to venture down the road of Glenfiddich 12. Now, I guess I could have started with a bunch of different whiskeys, but I chose to do this one because on my last video, I used this as a baseline whiskey for Robert and Jeremy. They're not whiskey drinkers. And I thought instead of just starting them out with something like Laphroaig or Ardbeg, might as well just go ahead and ease them into the process and start out with a what's you know popularly known as a beginner whiskey. So let's go ahead and crack this open and talk about it a little bit. So Glenfiddich has been in the business since 1887, and I do believe uh, William Grant and Sons started this, or William Grant started it, and he had his family working with him. And I believe we're now in the fifth generation, so the Grant and Gordon family uh, are involved with the production of this whiskey and this distillery. And I believe they are all single malt. So every expression that they have, and I believe it's up to about 20, is all single malt. I think they know their, their business. Now, this is saying that it's 40% ABV. It's, a very, it's very mild on the nose. It doesn't give you that alcohol burn. You're not blasted in the face right away with it. They're saying that it is chill filtered and they also use E150 coloring. Now, I'm just starting my, my whiskey journey. I'm intrigued enough about the non-chilled filter or being chill filtered and use or non-use of the E150. But at this point, Right now, if it tastes good to me, it tastes good. Uh, I'm not really necessarily concerned about what it looks like uh, or if it's chill filtered or not. Now, I also am intrigued to see where that takes me once I get more and more information about both of those subjects. So don't blast me in the comments about this. That's just where I'm at right now. On the nose, this seems to be very fruity, a little bit of butterscotch, pretty simple. Nothing outstanding. And again, this is kind of right down home plate. This is a space side whiskey. So the flavor profile of a space side whiskey is, you know, light, fruity, caramely, nothing too drastic on either end. You don't really necessarily have to search for anything in this particular whiskey. It's not that complex, not that complicated. It's just everything's going to be right there in front of you. Now I'm getting apple juice and pears. Maybe like a little bit of a spice, maybe a cinnamon spice along with that apple. Let's go ahead and taste it. ABV being at 40%, very low. Typically, if you're drinking something that high, that's higher proof, it gets that throat burn and that chest heating up. I don't get any of that with that. And just like the nose, I'm getting that same thing on the palate as well. I have that apple, I have the pear, I have the little bit of spice. And it's, it's, it's good. And I think, again, this is one of the reasons why I chose this, especially for Robert and Jeremy. It's, it was my baseline whiskey in my other video. And if you can uh, watch it right here, after you watch this, when you go back and take a look at it, I used this as a baseline. And then I compared it to the other American single malts that I had in my collection. Now, the American single malts are nothing like this at all. They're very expressive. They're very loud. They're very high proof in, in some cases. It's not necessarily as easy drinking as this. So I'm, I'm glad that I started with this. Taking a look at some of the information about Glenfiddich, it seems to be that, you know, when we talk about brand recognition, these guys were trailblazers. They, they, they were forefront of... The, the business itself, they kind of just, I, I think it's the stag. I heard somewhere that this, uh, the stag picture is a artist rendition of another painting. And that, that stag looking forward is like the business model of looking forward to the future, always innovating, uh, trying to figure out where we're going to go from, from here. They were the first to open their distillery doors to visitors so they can do some tours. They were the first to embrace the, the duty free shops, they were also the first to put these things in those gift packages, those those uh, sleeves, those cardboard sleeves for the whiskeys. They're also the, the people that put single malt scotch on the map. They started to export their whiskeys as single malt, which opened up the worldwide category of single malts. 
and for good reason. I mean, this is a very mild, very easygoing, not very complex. That doesn't mean it's not good. Uh, just because it's not complex, you don't have to search for anything. So if you're looking to get into a single malt whiskey, Scotch whiskey, this is definitely one that's good. And that's why I used it in my, in my video. Now I still get that blast of apple juice and cinnamon spice, a little bit of pear still. Same thing on the palate. I'm not getting much beyond what I have in the nose. So I'm not looking at a wide range of nosing uh, components and or uh, tasting components. What you smell is what you get in the taste. The finish seems to be rather mild. The fruit just kind of goes over your tongue. I would say that it's well-rounded. Well-rounded. You know, you're not really searching for much. It stays a little bit. Yeah, it's still there a little bit, but it's kind of fading away. And when they're aging this, they're using two different casks. They're using the X Oloroso sherry casks, and they're also using X bourbon casks. It says it right here on the label. 12-year-old uh, Oloroso sherry and bourbon casks. So there you go. Now, circling back to the E150 coloring and the non-fill or the non-chill filtration, I guess in the whiskey world and the whiskey uh, connoisseurs, they kind of want all of this stuff printed on the label so the consumer knows exactly what they're getting. Like I had mentioned before, I am not necessarily in that stage right now where I think even if I knew it had it or didn't have it, I would know the difference. So again, I'm interested to see how my palate changes. Now, I also see people putting water in it. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how water changes this a little bit. Being at 40 ABV, I would think that the water would dilute this even more. It would mellow it out even more. So I don't necessarily know if water is going to uh, help or hurt this. Probably hurt this more than help. Still get the same thing on the nose. Let's go ahead and taste. Yeah, it mellowed out even more. I don't think uh, it got better with water. I definitely probably would not put water in this. I would just kind of drink it, you know, the way that it is. All right, what else can we say about this? Um, good introductory whiskey, that's why I used it. I can also see myself um, not necessarily getting tired of this, but I can see myself as my palate starts to change, I can see wanting more, wanting more flavor, wanting more complexity, wanting to actually dive into the whiskey a little bit more. This one's not a conversation starter. Uh, and if you are deep in conversation with somebody at a party, I don't think this is going to dominate the conversation, uh, which in sometimes is a good way. So you're concentrating on, you know, conversing with other people rather than having the whiskey take over the uh, the conversation itself. So this is kind of like in the background, which is okay. And with all that being said, it's not to say that this whiskey is boring or not good. It is just a good standard, right down home plate, sweet fruity starter whiskey. That's that's how I would classify it. What you get on the on the nose, what you get in the palate, is what you get in the finish. And that's pretty much it. I would say that it's refreshing. I'd say that it's crisp and clean. It's a whiskey that's widely available. I got this at my local big box store. It was what is this? This is one liter. I picked this up for $58. If you're at a bar, more than likely they're gonna carry this. So yeah. One liter. 58 bucks, not a bad deal at all, and widely available. So if you're in a pinch and you want a, a whiskey fix, a single malt fix, this is where you're going. And as far as single malts go, this is the largest producer of single malt. Now I'm taking a look at some numbers here, so forgive me here. In 2017, 18, 19, they're producing 1.2 million nine liter cases per year. And I think the Glen Levitt's kind of right there as well. But I was also shocked to see that blended whiskeys are the most consumed whiskeys on the planet. And the leading producer of that is Johnny Walker. And in 2020, their numbers dropped down to 
14.1 million nine liter cases. But previous to 2020, and I'm sure everyone knows what happened in 2020, but previous to that, they were ranging anywhere from 17 million all the way up to 19, almost 20 million nine liter cases per year. Now that's that's a lot. So that kind of tells you where single malt uh, whiskeys or single malt scotches kind of fall into place. They're good, but they're not the most widely consumed. And it, and it takes a, a little bit of the, uh, the share away from, you know, the blended whiskey scene. All right, so wrapping this up, final thoughts on this. It's a good starter whiskey. You can't go wrong. Balanced on the nose, balanced on the on the palate. You're not struggling for anything. What you see, what you smell, what you taste is what you get. So if by chance your palate is looking for something a little bit similar to this and you don't want a single malt scotch, that's at 40 proof, maybe something like Bushmills, an Irish single malt would be good. That's going to be in my next review. We're also looking at maybe, maybe try the Glen Levitt and uh, NC. Maybe those, those two whiskeys uh, are going to be fairly similar to this, and it's not going to stretch your palate too much, so you kind of will be right there. Yeah, I think that's all I've got to say about this. So if you guys are interested in this and you're not a subscriber, this is only my second video, so why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you know somebody that's in the whiskey world that might be interested in this channel, go ahead and share it. My next review is going to be on the single malts that I did in my original, the American single malts that I did in my first video. I'm going to uh, do about three of those. I'll do the Delbach, the St. George, and the Balconis, all single malt American whiskeys. And that's where I'm going to leave it. So cheers. I hope you guys are enjoying your journey. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the Glenfiddich 12, what your experiences have been with this whiskey. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Right down home plate, can't go wrong with that.